Welcome back to the channel everyone, Triple M here and today I wanted to go through some settings on your Amazon Fire TV device that will not only help your device run fast but also keep your device protected and protect your data. So I did a video for this already in 2023 but since we're heading to a new year, new users decided to do an updated video. So if you want a Fire TV Stick, Fire TV Q, Fire TV Lite, any Fire TV streaming device Definitely watch this video, check out these settings and make the changes that works best for you. So let's go ahead and jump into it. Before we do, head over to the channel, hit the subscribe button, smash the notification bell. Let's go. So we're gonna go ahead and jump right into it. This is a new user interface for the Fire Stick, obviously. Uh, they did a big overall last year and by now everyone's Fire Stick should look like this. So first thing we're gonna do is head over to our settings. But let's head over to our privacy settings and you're gonna get to that by going over to your preferences. We do have parental controls in here and parental controls gives you the option to restrict access to videos purchasing so if you have children they're really quick to buy anything that's available whether it's from amazon prime or whatever the case is but uh, if your kids are going to be using your fire stick you want to go ahead and turn this on and that will restrict um, how much damage they can do as far as purchasing and watching certain types of content so if you turn it on, uh, it is gonna ask you to enter your pin if you haven't already set one up and it gives you a link where you can go ahead and reset. It. Following that URL, if you go to your Amazon page, you can see you have the option to reset your pin. Uh, you see the options for purchase and restrictions. So to prevent accidental charges, you wanna go ahead and turn that on. And this is what we can do on the Fire Stick as well. It gives you the view and restrictions guys. So you can play with it. Maybe you wanna just have G or seven. Um, you can see you can go ahead and you can change that. But let me just go ahead and put this back. Uh, scroll down it has apply viewing restrictions to all supported devices third generation so you have a lot of different options where you can go ahead and pick specific device that you want to go ahead and apply this for let me switch back over to the fire stick and we'll try the pin and see what options we have so the pin that i selected is one two three four zero and you can see it, it turns it on gives you you've just enabled parental controls and it applies those settings that you did set on your browser click OK and you can see that now you have uh, pin protected purchases you have viewing restrictions you have pin protected app launches pin protected photos and the option to change the pin so I think that's a real good feature like I said if you have kids they are gonna tinker they are gonna purchase stuff they are gonna view stuff that you probably don't want them to view so you can play with those settings and I like the fact that in the web interface you can set this to a specific specific device. Um, but if you go down to your privacy settings, let's go ahead and click on that. And this is where we're getting into the meats and bones of everything, guys. So first one is device data usage. So gives you a description to the side, tells you that use personal data collected by the operating system of this device for marketing and product improvement purposes. So if you're a really good person and just want to help Amazon by giving personal information, by all means, leave that on. But for me, I know I'm going to turn that off. All right. So it gives you a breakdown. Um, like I said, completely up to you. For me, I'm going to go ahead and turn that off. Next one is collect app usage data. So allow the app store to collect information on frequency and duration of use of downloaded applications. So this is another thing where they're gathering data, um, gathering data that seems useless to us, but I'm sure they're using it to, to sell more products or to, to benefit, make their pockets fatter. For me, I don't see the benefit for me, so I'm gonna go ahead and turn that off as well. Do have interest-based ads. Uh, once again, this is gonna be a personal preference. The description says allow apps on the device to use your advertising ID to show interest-based ads that display products and services that might be of interest to you. Again, if you like seeing those ads and you know recommendations, by all means, leave that on for me. Again, I'm going to go ahead and turn that off. So when you turn it off, you notice that the advertising ID, that option disappear. Um, every device has a unique advertising ID and I'll go ahead and uh, I'll blur that out. Um, but it tells you an advertising ID is, is a user resettable, unique random identifier we make available to apps on certain devices for advertising purposes. When you reset your advertising ID, you create a new advertising ID. So uh, whatever the case is, I'm going to go ahead and turn that off. 
and now it disappears. Let's go back. Next one is gonna be data monitor. And, and this one, uh, I do see the use behind this one. I'm gonna go ahead and turn it on so you can see the settings. So what this does guys, if you have internet that you either have a cap or you're just curious to see how much data you're using, uh, this can actually come in handy. So when you turn it on, you do have the option to set your video. Uh, if you set it to best quality, of course it's gonna use more data, but you can go all the way to good, better, um, or whatever you prefer. Of course, good is gonna be less data than best. So completely up to you. Like I said, this makes sense if you have a cap on whatever data you're using. Um, we do have the option to set an alert, so maybe you only wanna use two gigs uh, for streaming or something like that. You can set that uh, when you select it. You can see you have the option that tells you that set data limit in gigabytes, your Fire TV stick light. So uh, you can go ahead and set that up monthly top data usage. So reports data consumption used by apps for the current billing cycle a month specified in the data alert system. So again, just basically setting it up to let you know what data you use and which apps are using it. And uh, you do have the option to set an alert where you go over. For me, I have unlimited internet. I don't worry about this, but I think this can be of use to some people. So I'm going to go ahead and turn that off. A notification setting. So this is another good one. So uh, I have mine turned off. It says do not interrupt. So turn on to hide all application notifications. So I have mine turned off, which allows application notifications and pop-ups. Like I said, for some people might want to see notifications for certain applications. I'm going to go ahead and turn mine on. And now it should block those pop-ups. Another one is app notifications. Let's go ahead and click on that. So we can go in individually and turn on um, or turn off the notifications on each individual application. So maybe you don't wanna turn off all of them. You can go into individual applications. Featured content. So manage video and audio in the featured content area on your home screen. So if you guys ever get annoyed by this right here, when you go home and you go up a little bit and then this will start playing and you have the audio just going crazy, that's exactly what the setting is. So let's go back and we'll go ahead and turn that off. So let's go back in. I'm gonna turn mine off. Um, maybe some people actually like that, but I sure don't. So when you click on it, it gives you the option to allow video to autoplay. So I'm gonna turn off the video. And you also have the option to allow audio to autoplay. I'm gonna go ahead and turn that off as well. So let's go back to the home screen and we just go up. And as you guys can see, nothing is, is really happening, just a still picture uh, and it goes to a, a slideshow. So this is definitely less annoying, um, but it also it saves your data. It's one less thing for your Fire Stick to worry about. And we know that on the Fire Stick, it's all about um, using your resources uh, wisely. Uh, sync recent content. So include prime video titles, watch in other devices. Um, so for this, I find this useful. So maybe you're watching a prime video on this Fire Stick and you go downstairs to the Fire TV Cube or something you want to pick up. Uh, that's what that will do. So I would recommend leaving that on unless really you only have one device, then it, it doesn't make sense. And uh, like I said, this is a Fire Stick is a game of balancing. The more stuff you turn off, the less stuff your Fire Stick has to worry about. Thus the faster it should run. Uh, next, let's go ahead and we'll just check out My Fire TV. Developer options. So click on developer options. You have two options. You have ADB debugging and you also have install unknown applications. Now, ABD debugging is one of those settings that you either want to leave it off or if you have it on, you kind of want to know what you're doing. So ADB debugging essentially is a is a is a pathway for malicious stuff to get into your Fire TV stick. So unless you have an application specifically that uses it, like mouse toggle, for instance, um, you might want to go ahead and just turn it off. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and turn that off. I don't think I have mouse toggle on here. I'm sure there are some other applications that uses it, but normally those apps will tell you specifically to turn off that setting. So just wrapping up guys, these are settings that I definitely recommend at least taking a look at. Might not have the same preferences that I do, but uh, it's worth taking a look in my opinion. So if this video helped you, hit the thumbs up, share this video, subscribe if you haven't done so already. Thank you for watching again and I'll catch you on the next one.